content. Content. Introducing Xbox One. Wells live in Los Angeles with how the 360s problems are heating up. Some faulty Xbox 360s are literally melting down while running certain games. I was mad as f Microsoft hasn't specified the cause, but users say the console's cooling system just can't take the heat of a lot of plague. Howdy y'all, welcome to the DIY channel, or well, welcome back to the DIY channel. Looks like it's up to hackers and modders to save these old Xboxes. Now that we have a RGH modded Xbox, we can do so much things. Let's start by slapping in a one terabyte hard drive and throwing all the extra software we want on it. Can take out our hard drive. 250 gig, one terabyte. Open this case using fire. You can see the blade goes blue. That's when you know it's hot enough. Dead air. And at least this way, if you cut yourself, you'll cauterize the wound. Oh yeah, that's much easier. You want to do this outside? Uh, I was just sitting at home having some thoughts. This should just about come apart. So easy. There we go. Uh, looks like we are the same thickness. Clean up the burrs. So that's going to work mint. I don't like the look of that. I'll just chop it off. And now we can put our new drive in. What I'll do is I'll just tape it temporarily. And then when I get some silicon, I can do a nice seal it up jobby. But for now, sellotape will do. Clone this drive onto this drive. So I've got a USB caddy I've opened up. And I'm going to plug our Xbox drive in to convert it to USB. Power up the caddy. The one terabyte I plug directly into the SATA on my computer. It doesn't matter how they're plugged in, as long as they're plugged in. If you want to download Fat Explorer, all the software will be in the description below. And unzip it, launch it. And it's a seven day trial, so just hit try. It's me, Dora. So make sure you have the integration driver installed and you've rebooted. You can go to devices and we can see our Xbox hard drive. So now we can integrate it to Windows. I'm going to select a letter M because I know it's not used. And there's our files. First, I'll make sure that hidden files, there's no hidden files that we can't see. We'll back these up into a folder on the computer. This is going to take some time. Go back to our Fat Explorer and unmount. And we want to go to our formatting tools and format a Xbox 360 HDD. So you'll see we have a warning here. But because we have a hacked Xbox, we don't need to worry about that. So we need to right click on Start and go to Computer Management and open up Disk Management. So we go into Disk Management and right click the disk we know we want and go to Properties. We can see the precise name. If we minimize Fat Explorer, we can see what the name of our drive is and make sure our drive names are the same. But we know we're not going to format the wrong drive. And first we need to delete the volume so that our drive is unallocated space. Now we know which drive, we can hit next. And I'm going to select my content partition and make the clusters the largest size possible to hopefully avoid defragmentation down the line. I'll also let it create the compatibility partition as well and all the other partitions. I've got a terabyte so I'm not too worried. These are all really small. The one that I will skip is the security sector because we are RGH modded. Give it a name, check your summary, double check, triple check you're not formatting the wrong drive. Finish. It's found our new drive, physical drive 4. We can integrate to Windows. Give it a letter, go in this time. We can now see HDD1. So we just drag and drop our original hard drive's files straight on there. And we're ready to stick it back in the machine once it's loaded. Unmount. So we're back up and running in Aurora. Everything's grayed out because we just need to remap our content. So go to settings, content, and we need to go into each path. Delete our old ones, delete. Just like when we set up Aurora, we need to remap our files where we're keeping our applications and our games. If you missed that, go back to my build video. I'll link it up in the top corner above. Yes, it's working. We have all our applications and games. Let's go into system settings and check our hard drive size. 
Storage. Oh, yeah, boy. 900 gig free. Let's go to dash launch. So these consoles are notorious for running hot. This was running at 75 degrees before. Then it became unprecedented failure rates. Press the back button, then the left bumper button. System info down. You can override the fan speed and you can drop your temperature a whole lot. But listen to how noisy it gets. Instead of doing that, I prefer to use the target temperature. So if you're targeting 55 degrees, CPU, GPU, and RAM at 50, your fans aren't going to spin up too hard, but it's going to try and keep your temps around that. And by doing that, I've found my fans are still quiet, but I'm staying around that 50 degrees mark. Console is much happier. So you want to add homebrews, but you don't want to have to do USB or FTP. The great news is now there's a homebrew store. Brew your own liquor. From Aurora, System, Scripts, and we go into the Aurora repo browser and Unity Scripts. We have the Homebrew Store version 2. Amazing, the modders have already updated it. So let's download the Homebrew Store. Now we can go back, back, and now we have the Homebrew Store. So you've got your apps. Oh look, we can put our NAND back if we needed. If you've still got JRunner, it would have saved a working folder so that you can get your original NAND back if you ever needed. Me, I'm not too worried. I like my one hacked. I'm not going to unhack it. So you've got some free games. You've got heaps of emulators, heaps of dashboards. It's all sorts of handy stuff in here. So you'll want to open up the homebrew store and go into emulators and find the different emulators you want. I'm going to try the PlayStation one. It's called PCSXR360. PS1. Yes. Restart. Settings. Content. Add a path. HDD1. Emulators. PCSXR. So we go select with Y. Put a depth of 5 or so. Save. There we go. Unfortunately, I couldn't seem to just play the game off the disc. I ended up just downloading the ROM, but you could also create your own. So you need to open up your system settings, go to your file browser, copy the ROM files. There'll be a bin and a Q file and copy them onto the hard drive where the PlayStation emulator is into its ROM folder. There it is. Well, it works about as well as you'd expect for an emulator. Uh, it's running pretty good. Emulation is definitely way better on the PS3, but I'll tell you where this shines. Emulating original Xbox games. We need to install extra compatibility files. So we need to go to console mods, and we need to grab our compatibility fixer, and we need the hacked compatibility file. So we just need to extract those, chuck the compatibility partition fixer straight on the root of your USB, Go into the HUD and drag the compatibility files over. We go to System, File Manager, USB, and we can run the compatibility partition fixer. So we can go Launch and A to attempt to write compatibility partition info. Completed. Press B to exit. Now we can power off. We gotta take the power back. System, File Manager, USB, Compatibility. We want to highlight that, copy, go back to our HDDX, our compatibility partition, and we can paste in here. Do another reboot. We should be able to launch Shrek. Amazing. It's working. <laughs> Holy crap. Now we can play any original Xbox game we want. So what do you do if it looks like your game's being chewed by the dog? Or even worse, some bloody punk kids just come along and destroyed it! So that is why we need to download our images. If you have a broken disk, you better get it backed up fast, because I don't know how long these internet archives are going to be around for. And they're not particularly fast. What's great is, if you have a working disk, you can just back them up straight on the Xbox. Even an unmodded Xbox, you can back up your games and then unlock them later once you've modded your Xbox. So let's use our Xbox, unmodded style, to back up a game, put it on the computer, 
turn it into an ISO and see if it's quicker than downloading the game. If we go into our storage settings and we format our USB to give our maximum amount of space and we go to our game so we've got Gears of War 2 so don't worry guys I didn't actually break it that was just a writable so if we go to game details and we install it to the USB drive this will put it on our USB and then we can put the USB in the computer and convert it to an ISO and that way you can archive it on your computer 11 hours! I think I know who's going to win this race we have our USB drive and in our content folder we have our game files download and extract the God to ISO program so if we go to God to ISO and run this program we can add the files content top one this one and this file here opens so browse save it to a safe place with enough room and go it should be created there it is and rename it and then you can store it as a backup on your computer play it in an emulator on your computer do whatever you want now say you've modded your console and you want to create this iso into the files to put back onto the xbox download wx360 1.6 ra you will get an error because it's not a secure website so make sure you go into your download and unlock it once you've extracted it open it up a lot of these programs though were built for windows 7 and get some weird errors i just pressed continue and it worked fine go to file open find your iso and open it then we can go back to file extract select your usb drive make a new folder on there if you've got other files and that's away you can see the status on the right and once that's finished we're ready to plug back into the xbox right let's copy our game onto the hard drive file manager it's a bit annoying but we need to go to the usb and we need to copy the individual files so you need to select them all and go copy go back hard drive go to the folder where you save your 360 games roms 360 and we'll create a folder Gears of War 2, done. Now we go into our new folder, paste. Yes, and you can do exactly the same thing by putting in a disk and just going to the DVD drive in the file manager and copying the files straight off the disk and putting them onto your hard drive. You could also send the files from your computer straight to the Xbox using FTP, but unfortunately it only runs at 2 megabytes per second so USB is way faster so I didn't bother to include it but leave it in the comments if you'd like to see it so make sure that you've actually gone into your settings and to content and mapped your ROMs folder then it's just a matter of rebooting and your game should show up and then we go to our game details we should be able to check for updates so you can see what you have installed and go to the Unity Marketplace to get new ones. Let's see if it launches. Yes! How good. So you can back up your games before you hack your Xbox. Oh, this game looks pretty cool. Unaware that their misguided attempts at retaliation were only leading to them find number ever one. closer to I hate extinction. I number two first unbelievable i've hit 1000 subscribers thank you so much everyone that supported the diy channel you guys are awesome and i'll see you on the next one and even after all that we're not even halfway through downloading that rom